are such an asshole. Even though I am an American, I do have to extend thank yous and and uh, thanks in general to several people in the United Kingdom. First, uh, the client's father, this young man sent in a request. And I have to thank his father first and foremost because uh, you did just a spectacularly bad job of raising this kid. And just like American fathers are pussies and absent and absolutely jokes of human beings, if you had done your job right, I would not have been able to charge your son this money, okay, because your son wouldn't need me. So first, thank you for being a spectacular failure of a father. Uh, and all the other United Kingdom fathers who I'm going to assume, like American fathers, are a bunch of pussies. <clears throat> Second, I like to thank the father, the mother, and the United Kingdom taxpayer because there's no way in hell this kid actually paid for it with his own money. Sure, he might have worked a little bit. Sure, his money might have gone into the general funds, but he has failed. You have invested two semesters of no doubt taxpayer money to pay over educated, overcompensated professors and university and staff and the buildings and the maintenance, and everything for this kid to piss away a full year of college education. And because you're United Kingdom and you're just, you're just so great and, and you got your bad teeth. You have so many socialist left this welfare policies, this kid, maybe the parents tossed in a couple, but I'm not saying the parents didn't like cost this nothing. All right. I charge this kid 150 bucks. Somewhere in there is parental money. Somewhere in there is his money, but also somewhere in there is taxpayer money. I want to thank all you losers, you failures, you morons, and you socialist dopes to helping this kid pay me, an American, get it out of your country, create a little current account deficit there. Actually, I don't even know if we got a current account surplus with the United States. You're like the United States. You don't produce anything over there either, do you? except a bunch of whiny quants. So I want to thank all of you for making this possible, because otherwise, once again, I'd have to work a real job if you worthless, pathetic vermin called fathers did your freaking job. Oh, and by the way, kid, you're a putz too. So don't think this is just your parents' fault and the United Kingdom taxpayers' fault. You're a schmutz. <clears throat> so here we go. Dear Cappy, I'm 19 years old. I live in the United Kingdom. I failed my first year of university business and economics because I am a retard. Yes, you are. And you're lazy. You're not dumb. You're lazy. And that's worse. That's worse. At least the kid who is mentally retarded is physically, mentally, cannot do that. You can. You chose not to because you're a lazy pussy. F you. <clears throat> I thought I could wing the final exams. I couldn't. I failed two of them. Then I tried to wing the resits and took place in summer, failed again. Man, I love it that the United, United Kingdom taxpayer is pissing away so much money on you. In between the failing of my first exams and the resits of the summer, I started learning how to code whilst working part-time. Okay, little bit old school American. In Wait, hold it. Since you're from the United Kingdom, but they start beating you up because you were working, you can't you can't be doing that. That's too manly. It's too independent. Are you all supposed to sit there across the Atlantic sucking your thumbs, complaining about the weather? <clears throat> what is this? Victorian England where you guys might have gone and done something? Hold on here now. In between the family, my first exams and resits in the summer, I started learning how to oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I had failed my resets until the summer break was over. And by then I had already signed my tenancy agreement because you're a moron. You didn't pay attention for the student flat I'm currently living in. Who's paying for that? You, your parents, or the taxpayer, or all three above? <clears throat> Up until now, I've been living off of savings and the money I got from selling my car before I moved out. You know, you had a car, bro. Hey, bro, was it a cool car? Did you get your dick wet? However, I'm not going to be able to afford it that much longer because you were a moron and didn't do basic financial planning or get a job. So you go to school, you don't study. So that should free up time to work, right? 
you you know you hey i know it's going to be hard for you people across the atlantic to figure this out you know you're talking to a guy who went to school full time and worked full time right and graduated 6 months early we're talking 80 hour work weeks minimum uh, you know you're capable of doing now i know that just blows up Brit, britain people's mind united kingdom people's blah, blah, blah. my goodness huh? don't you know we collect our government welfare checks and be chabs bless them on Dilly wiggly poodly dankly doos. <laughs> you got no money. What do you do? You do pot. Are you cool, kid? You play your video games? Let's smoke some pot and jerk off to more porn. Gee, Cappy, what's the solution? Oh. <clears throat> However, I'm not going to be able to afford it much longer, so I'm planning on moving back with my parents before the start of April. Oh, there, your mom is involved. Okay, your mom. Oh. <clears throat> Is your dad like a tree? Did your mom marry a tree? He just sits there. Not a big sturdy oak. I mean, a little whippling sap sapling. A sapling. There you go. Is your dad a sapling? Cut it close. <laughs> With a British accent, of course. <laughs> My dad's a sapling pussy. Watch his dad go threaten me. Like, what? Are you going to hire a government program to do it for you? I mean, you'd have to actually, like, do something. Is there a government program to get you the boat fare across the Atlantic? <sighs> After finding out I was going to have to resit my exams for a second time later on this year, when the first years will be taking them, I enrolled in a software development skills boot camp that was fully funded by the government. Of course it was. <laughs> Look, I know we give the gals a lot of guff, a lot of guff on these parts of the internet for failing to be feminine and nice, sweet, kind kind of gals that we want. But by God, they got every right to complain about you men being pussies. You are not real men. Yeah, and I know they voted for you. Girls voted for the socialist government. Oh, just gonna take a oh, womb to do. Oh, Labor Party. <laughs> Can you guys do something the government doesn't pay for? Oh my God. Which has just finished. I now have access to an employability team for the next six months. Do you have a wet nurse for you? How much help do you need? An employee, but you get a team, huh? You get a team of people to help you apply for a job. Gee, I must thank God you got a team because I wouldn't know how to apply for a job and find employment. It must be really difficult. <clears throat> and apparently the average time it takes one to get a junior developer role after the course is three months. However, I'm a bit of a crossroads and very much appreciate your input as I'm struggling to decide where to focus my energy and resources it feels as though I'm being pulled in multiple directions. Okay, stop. You're so lady, lazy, you got no energy and resources. You are just this big-ass pussy who's pushed wherever the least amount of resistance going, there's the most amount of government money. All right? you. I Now, the one thing you've done is you went into this programming boot camp, and I presume you did it? I don't know. It's government paid for. So I don't know if there's any standards or if you know what you're actually doing or you just showed up and they passed you along like they do in the American public schools and you're being dumped out of the real world and you have no skills. So I don't know. But let's be very clear. You're going to still be this worthless piece of shit for the rest of your life. A joke, a parasite on the United Kingdom taxpayer and your parents with no life to live for, none whatsoever. It's going to be this day in, day out, unless you actually get a work ethic, stop being lazy, and invest in something that pays off. So maybe you developed a work ethic 
over the over this boot camp. Maybe you got some actual skills, right? But do, before I even tell you where to put your energy and resources, you better have a work ethic and energy and resources to invest. Because if you don't, it doesn't matter what you do. Now you go on to give me four options. I'm not even going to get to the options just yet. It doesn't matter which one of these four you take if you're going to continue being a lazy, worthless, parasitic quantahaha. You got it? It doesn't matter. <clears throat> the taxpayers pissed away all this money on your education. Your parents pissed away all this money on your education. On your education. The sapling of a father you got might want to bang your mom and get his little limp dick leaf up of a penis to go have sex with her on the kitchen island. I don't know if you got kids. United Kingdom, you're poor. I don't know. Do you live in the government housing because it's easier that way? <laughs> So before we go through your options, make the choice now. You're either going to do it the right way and have a work ethic for the rest of your life, or you're not. And if you're not, go sign up with the CHAV department. I don't know what a CHAV is. C-H-A-V? Like, that's like I watched the, the, the movie, the new James Bond. It's not called James Bond. It's called The Kingsman. It's actually the real James Bond. Unlike the James Bond movies, it's good. He's like brought up in government housing. Um, the, the kid, <clears throat> he becomes the new Kingsman, the, that kid. All right. You're in the government housing. He jumps around on the concrete. All right. You can have that life. All right. Huh? Get your government health care, your government food, your government housing, and go do that. Right, you can take government programs, and you got like some lady with her social work degree. You're brave, you're good, brave. Oh, good. Tiff, toff, toff, tiff. You're all brave and amazing. Brave and amazing. Oh my goodness, it's because of the capitalist. That's why you don't got the money, governor. Yeah, you just sit there and watch your telly. Pay your license fee, <laughs> and then. And then, yeah, yeah, it's it's the rich. It's the, it's the rich people in London. God, Christ. So before we go through a strategy, before we, none of your decisions matter if you're going to be lazy because you're not going to put any effort into affecting those decisions. You know, why don't, look, and why don't you add to these decisions if you're going to be, continue to be lazy and worthless, all right? Why don't you fantasize a little bit? You gave me four options. Option number five. Oh, should I climb Mount Everest? Option number six. Should I race in the F-100 at Monaco or F-1 in Monaco? Uh, uh, <clears throat> option number seven. Should I bang whoever the hot chick is in Britain? I don't know. Do you guys celebrate men? Are the, are the men now the hot chicks over in Britain right now? I don't know. Go ahead, because you're not going to do it. And then go run off to your money, suck on her, tittle a little bit, go run to the government, run up to a random taxpayer on the street. Hey, you tax, do you work? You work. Hey, can I suck on your tits? I don't care that you're a bloke. See, I am lazy, and I need you to support me. So instead of going through the, the inefficiency of the government collecting your tax money, can I just suck on your tits anyway right now? <laughs> So let's go through your four options, kid. Option one, forget about software development. Study from our resets. Pay the university 300 pounds to take. You won't pay the university. Someone else will. To take the exams, carry on with the university. Pursuing my original goal of becoming an investment banker. <laughs> you, you, you can't even pass... Freshman year one exams, and you want to go work at the finance district of London? Okay, no. Number one, your degree is worthless. Number two, you don't have the work ethic. Number three, you wouldn't want to work in that industry. It's corrupt. It's inept. And you you don't come from the right stock, okay? You're just not. No. No. Although this probably isn't the best option as I spent the second half of first year working part-time trying to figure out if I was interested in anything else instead of attending the majority of my lectures. 
You think an investment bank is going to tolerate you being that inefficient with your time? Oh, my God. Oh, this is great. <clears throat> Option two, carry on applying for software development jobs, but also study for the resits later this year. Pay the university 300 pounds to resit them. And then depending on whether or not I get software development job, go back and continue my degree. At least this way, if I pass the exams, but get the job, it looks like I dropped out, but as opposed to failed out. The downside here, bah, 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 bah. no, no, no. You're not going to university. No, mm -mm. no. I think what you're going to do, option two is also off. The th There's no, none of your options. I'll go through them all. I don't, I didn't read through them all in detail. Option number two is also off the table because you're going back to university, which you've proven you're not responsible enough to do. So every option you have where it says university, replace with get a job. Now, I don't know what the rest of the options are. We're going to read through your stupid options you've given us. All right. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to get a job and work. If you're going to live at home with your parents, you're going to get a job at work. And you're going to at minimum like help out, pay for groceries. All right. You're going to be like kind of a only half a parasite. All right. Then you are in addition to, in addition to, because you're already, I know you're British, you're European, like, oh my goodness, if I got a part-time job, that'd be 20 hours a week, I couldn't possibly do more, I gotta watch me tell you, jerk off to the pono. That, oh my God, do people work more than 20 hours a week? Good God, man, what do you think we are, the South Koreans? <clears throat> so you will work, I'd say, a full-time job. And then in addition to, you will continue your software education studies. You will continue learning programming languages with the goal of getting some kind of employment in software programming going the IT route or the computer programming route. And it will require lots of work and you becoming an autodidactic. Now, I know you don't understand the English language, but that means one who teaches himself, which because you're, you don't need a teacher. You're not going to listen to teachers anyway. You show up. You got like a government program. You got like maybe government. Does the British government pay people, the taxpayer, do they pay two people to hold your ears open so you hear more? I don't know what more support you could have gotten in university, but you didn't use it. All right, so you are going to teach yourself because that's the way you make money in computer programming is teach yourself. And then hopefully while you're working some kind of real job as a bartender or a Uber or something else, whatever they do over you, maybe you could be the ear holder for college students so they can hear better. Yeah, you're going to work some job. And as you keep applying and improving your skills in computer programming, inevitably you will land a gig. Maybe part-time, maybe contract work. You'll land something, and then you'll have another job. And you'll continue to do that job. And you will continue to do your studies, and you will continue to work the other job. And you will keep going down that road until you got enough gigs or contracts or work in computer science or computer programming, rather, to scale down your daytime job or your full-time job to a part-time gig and start making more money that way. But nowhere in there are you going back to university to, like, do whatever the hell it was you did. <clears throat> Dropped out as opposed to failed out. The downside here is I'm going to continue to feel as though I'm being pulled multiple directions. I would, would have wasted time and energy creating an avenue that I won't end up going down depending on if I land a job or not. Nope, you're not doing that. <clears throat> Option three, forget about university completely. There you go. Here it is. Okay. Does this have reason and evidence in it? Double down on software development. Learn as much as I can. Apply for many jobs as I can. Okay. I've got a job in my hometown I can mostly likely go back to. There we go. So with this option, once I've moved back, I can earn in the day and then study and apply for jobs in the evenings. Option three. There you go, man. There you go. That's it. That's good. Option four, <clears throat> switch to tech-related degree like software engineering, computer science. I think this option would also require me to pass my resets. No, no, no more university for you. Nope, nope. You Here's what you need to do. You need to work, and you need to support yourself. And you, you, here's, you need to become a man. You need to, what I would say, because you screwed up so badly, you need to go back to home. You need to build up some money. You need to work. You need to develop a skill. 
and you're like, you're not going to see your parents. I know you're going to be living at home, but you're not going to see them because you're going to be working a night shift. You're going to be studying or a day shift and then work at a, studying at, at the night. I don't know. Or find a shift, find a security guard thing where you could study at night and make some money. You're rarely going to see them. But you should get to the point that you know what it takes to support a human being, to not be a parasite on your parents or the taxpayer. And then once you got that swift kick in your ass, you know what it's like to be an actual real man. Oh. I got to take my study seriously this time. But I would think with computer programming and software, if you do that for a year, you're going to have some skills. You're going to realize you don't really need to go to college. And then also you're starting to work some contract days, you little pickup work here, some part-time work there, maybe work on a project or something like that. And about a year or two time, as you've worked up the money, figure out what it's like to actually be a real man. You're, you'll have a better idea whether or not you should go back to school or not for computer programming or software engineering. It depends, though. I don't know what it's like in the United Kingdom. This is assuming you become an adult. But some a lot of guys say, nah, you don't need it. Some people say, yeah, if you get in corporate, they like to see a degree. We're not at that crossroads yet. All right. We're still like, hey, maybe you get a job and give your parents some money while you live at home. Okay. <laughs> um. Downing University take me on a, I don't any university is going to want to take me on board for a STEM degree if I came and pass my first year business economics degree. No, they're not. Well, I don't know. Maybe they just want your money. I don't know. However, a bit hesitant on this option because the people on the skills boot camp that had tech related degrees said it was a waste of time and money. Okay, there you go. There you go. But then after attending how after reading how not to become millennial, I was a bit more sold on the idea of a university of STEM. Degree. You are not capable of a STEM degree. You haven't proven it to yourself. You're not going to college. Get a job. Go and work. Stop being a parasite. Get some skills in computer programming. Apply for those jobs. Option number three. And I'm, I'm shocked you read how not to become a millennial, but you applied absolutely none of it in your life choices. I mean, <laughs> if you're in neuroscience and flunked your first i could maybe see that you failed twice business that's like one of the dumbest easiest degrees ever and you failed the entry year twice you ain't going to a stem program son <clears throat> and you read the menu. Uh, well, women are not going to be a part of your life as if you're living at home. I think option three is what I'm swaying more towards by keep letting myself get caught up in the fact I would have failed out of university. Will have? You have. You did. You failed out. <laughs> not dropped out, even though I hate university. My stats professor once gave us a 30-minute lecture about how she doesn't wear a wedding ring because it's a sign of oppression. <laughs> It's another reason not to go to university. Oh, if you're going to go to university, go to Western Governors University, which is located in the United States. Get an accredited degree in computer science. Do it online. You don't have to deal with these just vile, evil people whose stats and telling 30 minutes why she doesn't wear her wedding ring. <sighs> I understand it makes no difference if I get a software development job, but what if I don't? Mm. Well, then I guess life sucks, huh? I guess you better study harder. And then I have to go back to university for a STEM degree, having failed on my first attempt more to get a software development job. Dude, you're not there yet. Not, don't worry about that. College is over for you, man. It's done. You're not capable of it. Now go work. Go see if you can get a career in computer programming without having to get a STEM degree. Even the, 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 the boot camp guy said you don't need it. Try it. But give up. You, you're a flunk out. You, you are a flunk out. Right now, you are a flunk out. Doesn't mean you can't get a degree later on. Right? But right now, you're not going back to college. It ain't going to happen. Your honest advice. Was that honest enough for you? <clears throat> hey, look at us. We're Brits. <clears throat> Give us more government money. How did you read How Not to Become a Millennial and like still failed that hard? How? How? Mm. 
you know, and you're the classic case of those who are lazy work twice as hard. Dude, what if you just studied right the first time? Huh? Like, I always look at people who wait for the bus. Now, I understand if you're young or major metro or you're just new to the area, you don't have a car. But I always looked at people waiting for the bus because I used to wait for the bus. I'm like, this is inefficient. It was also cold. I'm like, man, I need to get a car because it was more efficient. But here you are, 50 years old, and then you're still waiting for the bus because you couldn't afford a car. Like, how? You're lazy. And you're wasting time. It's costing you more. You're working twice as hard. Do it right or don't do it at all. <clears throat> Evan, 5K in bucks. You said that the British don't produce anything anybody a anymore. Nobody is better at creating administrative bloat. I know what's made in Britain. I don't I don't get products that are made in the United Kingdom. What what do you guys make? <laughs> Nonstop trade, two bucks. The client sounds like a life coach influencer material. <laughs> yeah, if you had big tits and you were a girl, I'd say just go show it on the internet and save your money. But yeah. just some guy, a buck again. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Nonstop trade, two bucks. Option four, join the military and fight for Prince Harry. Uh, the military would be good for him, but I, I, I'm just... He's either going to choose to stop being lazy or not. That's it. And he'll have a life that's better than living in British government housing. And I don't know whatever. I, I don't know what British welfare culture is like. I just, I don't. Um, It's going to be that or it's not. Evan, five Canadian bucks. If you're too lazy to spend a few months producing a solid portfolio, then a coding boot camp is absolutely a waste of time and money. If you're too lazy to find out whether or not you passed your exams, a lot of things like, you know, if you're too lazy to figure out what the bus schedule is so you don't miss the last bus and now you got to hoof it home. Sam Whiskey, the most American name in America. <clears throat> Five bucks, can't be. Can the parasites be rehabilitated or are they all persona non grata? They, they can. This is a very important thing because, like you said, you have all these generations now of, of young people who are not so young anymore who never been taught a work ethic, made to believe they have mental disorders that they don't have. And they and and right now they can't. But let me pose this to you, Sam. This is how I got my work ethic. Yeah, what if you die otherwise? You starve and you, you will be homeless and you'll be cold. Now, some, it shows you just how afraid people are of work. Some will go homeless. Some will live in a tent. But a lot of that is also subsidized by getting food shelves and um, Salvation Army and clothing. Like if you are facing death, like you will die if you don't work. People will mature the F up pretty quickly and 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 behave and and submit themselves to the most horrible of horror things. And that is get a job. They will. If it's the choice of death or get a job, you'll get a job. But, you know, United Kingdom, the United States, oh, my God, we just got to help out all these poor people. What is it? Did you have a bad childhood? Or are you stressed? Yeah, it's so horrible. It's like, no, let him starve. Let him starve. But we're liberal white women. We need to feel good about yourselves. Why don't you get an engineering job? Oh, I don't want to do anything hard. I just want to give those poor people your money. Then way I feel good about myself. I don't want to work or actually solve the problem. I just want to perpetuate the problem with your money. Oh, okay. They can be rehabilitated, but it's not going to require anything hard or like <clears throat> you put them through rehabilitation. It's like we leave you on an island and there's a little shop over there. You make us a bunch of widgets and then the boat will bring you money or bring you food. We don't even have to have money involved in this. And you could, there's, there's some trees over there. You can make, uh, if you chop them down, you can build housing with, you know, or you die. And that's how you rehabilitate people. I mean, it, I've called it mold theory. 
oh my God, we got all this mold. How do we do to prevent the mold? And every leftist socialist idea and labor party's idea is like, you give it more bread. It just doesn't have enough bread or some, give it some support bread. Maybe the yeast is a little bit off. Maybe we didn't use the right type of flour. Try this bread. Oh my God, there's more mold. What do we do? I don't know. I have my doctorate in sociology. I mean, mold prevention. It's not even prevention, it's mold treatment. We just need all the bread in the world to give it to the mold, and then that way it'll stop being mold. Why is there no more bread left? So now everyone dies. <clears throat> Sam Whiskey, five bucks. The only thing about California is Bob's Big Boy Restaurant. They make the best bacon burger in the Western Hemisphere. All right. If I ever find myself in California, I'll be there. Uh, Did you know, man? Two bucks. That reminds me of Cartman at the Special Olympics. I don't think I saw that one. I don't think I saw that one. Did he win? Because Cartman was pretty fat. I mean, they're uh, handicapped or not. I think Cartman would lose to because he's not in good shape. All right, that's it. <clears throat> so there you go. Link below is the book, I think, How Not to Become a Millennial. I will tell you once again, though, going forward, because your fathers are not here. I know they're maybe they're there. Magically, they stuck their penis within your mother's vagina. Magically, your mother did not abort you. Okay? <clears throat> but without their presence, even though they're there, you need to either decide you're going to work or not. And if you're not going to work, if you're going to be lazy, then you don't have to make decisions, which should be alleviating to you. Just go collect a government check, come up with a mental disorder you don't have so you could collect disability. All right. <clears throat> don't, don't, but don't build plans or dreams if you're lazy. Hey, there you go. Don't, don't live life if you're lazy. Don't, Burden yourself with the false promise of living a life if you are not willing to execute and put forth the work. If you're lazy, just be lazy. Don't bother with dreams, okay? Here we go. Caught a, oh, more came in. Hang on. Oh, no, that's we got that. We're there. We're there. Boom, we're done. All right. See you guys later. Toodles.